In other news, the Raspberry Pi Foundation launches a $4 yes. Pi Pico. $4. How do you make a computer for $4? So epic. I don't even understand it. No, you can't even you can't even get like the socket of an epic motherboard for $4. <laughs> Ah. Yeah, so the Pi Pico is the first in-house designed microcontroller from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Typically, hobbyists will pair the Raspberry Pi with microcontrollers for real-world applications due to the Pi not being great at low latency I.O. interfacing. Like all Raspberry's devices, the Pico has extensive documentation aimed at both experienced power users and new tinkerers, and features an in-house designed RP2040 processor built on a 40 nanometer process. It's got dual ARM Cortex M0 Pluses clocked at 133 megahertz, 264 kilobytes of embedded memory with support for up to 16 megs of off-chip flash memory, a USB 1.1 controller. Okay, so it's not cutting edge. <laughs> More nerd specs are listed on the blog post. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm very curious. I'm headed for the nerd specs. Look at this thing. Holy smokes, it is tiny. Ooh, whoopsie daisy. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it is flipping tiny. Gotta scroll a little bit to actually get to the Pi Pico. Look at it. It's, it's a tiny, it's a tiny boy. Like there's a little like display, like a little project display right next to it. That is that is sick. Okay, so here's some of these, here's some of these nerdy speeds and feeds. 30 GPIO pins, four of which can be used as analog inputs. Okay, that's pretty sweet. TV controller, 16 PWM channel, USB mass storage boom. Oh, okay, cool. So you can yep, that makes sense. Cool. A lot of people seem very interested in the analog inputs, which is really yeah, cool. that's a big something deal. I would, something I would point out with something like this is like, yeah, a lot of the modern computing that we do, especially in like the RAM department, I would say, has kind of ballooned a lot. Mm -hmm. And like, what what you're going to do on a computer or a laptop or a phone, etc., is going to be very heavy. But the things that you can use computers like this for, like you you read out those specs and you're like, oh, that sucks. But it still has USB functionality at all, which yeah. is actually extremely useful if you're doing more specialized, smaller tasks. Like yeah. doing doing basic things hasn't necessarily gotten more difficult, especially if you're like developing specifically for nope. it, or if it's something very specific that you're going to have it always. You do. want an auto waterer for your like plants. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't need more. Than you this. don't need a Xeon. You know, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. You're good. You're good. So like 133 megahertz and a USB 1.1 controller and 264 kilobits of uh, embedded memory is probably completely fine for like. Yep. There a you go. Lot. You heard it here first. You heard it. This is the next famous quote. Two, what was it? 256 <laughs> kilobit. Well, it should, ought to be enough for anyone. I'm Luke Lafreniere, 2021. There's a ton of projects that you can accomplish with that much, and you don't necessarily need more. And I think the art of of accomplishing as much as you can with what you have has kind of died a little bit. Like I remember watching- Just say min-maxing, Luke. You know you want to. I, yeah, the min-maxing min your hardware has died a little bit. I know like watching gaming documentaries from a long time ago, watching game developers talk about like min-maxing the position of data on a disc. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, for sure. So that the, the head is more likely to be closer to, you know, that part of the- uh, of the actual disk itself so that the next data it needs is like right in line. Like, yeah. like that stuff is crazy. And it yeah. was actually something that people did. And like, you had to really fight a lot to, to fit within these crazy confines. And yes, that is still a thing. Um, consoles are a, I'm not trying to drag on consoles, but consoles are a more measured metric. Like, you know, more what you're dealing with. Um, but we don't really see that many crisis style games come out anymore. It's, I think it's much less common for a game to come out and everyone that wants that game to go rush out and do massive computer upgrades so they can actually play it. Like, I, I genuinely know people that are running processors that are like nine to ten, 10 generations old that are still running new modern titles just fine. Now, to be, 
crazy. To be clear, it's like more of a it's more of a microcontroller than like an actual computer. Like you wouldn't go you yeah. wouldn't go load up Raspbian on this even. Like that's no. But uh, what I'm saying is you can still accomplish a lot with it. Absolutely. And and it's cool that I don't know. I like the idea of working with those confines and being able to accomplish great things anyways.